So the science behind Flubber. First off, what's Flubber? Flubber is the Disney movie remake of The Absent-Minded Professor. It stars Robin Williams as Professor Brainard. And Professor Brainard and his fiance work at a college that has some financial problems. And he's trying to develop a new source of energy that he thinks will help save the school. So while he's tinkering around with his science, he creates this rubbery living green goo and he becomes so entrenched in his work, he ends up missing his own wedding. His fiance dumps him. She starts dating this, you know, evil guy because there has to be a villain. And um, Professor Brainard spends the rest of the movie trying to use this substance to win her back. Um, after it's all said and done, he does end up making up with his fiance and getting married and saving the school. Uh, because that's how the Robin Williams do. So while Flubber isn't actually something that's real, um, we can create something similar using very real science uh, behind it. So let's proceed. So let's define Flubber. It's not really a word. Well, it is a word. It means like flabby, but that's not how we're using it here because we're actually like making something. So flubber is a noun and it is pronounced full up burr. And it is a rubbery polymer that is created by cross-linking a boron compound with polyvinyl alcohol. So what's a polymer? Polymer is large molecules that are repeating identical structures that are connected by covalent chemical bonds. They can be natural or man-made, and it's actually a Greek word. Uh, poly means many, and miros means many parts, or means parts, miros means parts. So many repeating identical structures. What's boron? Boron is an element on the periodic table. It was discovered in 1808 by uh, Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac, the same guy that has the gas law named after him. And this other guy, Louis Jacques Fenard. Boron is used in a lot of things. Um, the ones that I thought were really interesting were pyrotechnics. So, uh, fireworks or you know concerts that have you know explosions or movies any kind of produced explosion uh, it's usually produces like a green flash so the, any kind of like green fireworks has boron in it radiation shields uh, control rods for nuclear reactors and it is a metalloid um, so yeah, I said flubber was a compound though, a boron compound. So it's not just straight boron, there's other stuff in it, right? So flubber, we make flubber out of borax, which is a powdered laundry detergent. And the compound, scientific, you know, compound is sodium borate decahydrate. And um, another thing that borax is used for other than laundry is antiseptics, uh, but most importantly, flubber. And what about polyvinyl alcohol? We said polyvinyl alcohol was in our flubber mixture too. So it is a water soluble polymer. It's colorless, it's odorless, and it's used in paper making. So if you I don't know if you've ever seen people like how they make paper, but you know, you pulverize wood and trees into like a powdery consistency and you add water and then you add a PVA, which is going to essentially glue all of those little like flakes of tree and it'll make paper, uh, textiles. So fabrics, um, eye drops and adhesives we will be using adhesive version of uh, PVA to make flubber today. So it's cross-linking. 
cross-linking is basically how you make polymer chains. So if you mix up the borax laundry detergent and water, you just have, you know, a bowl of soapy water. But if you add PVA and you heat it up, it's going to make these cross-linking bonds, which eventually will turn it from a liquid into a more elastic substance. So this is a gross example, but if you were chewing your bubble gum and like, let's say you were stretching it out of your mouth with your hands. And so that would, you know, it's really elasticy and it kind of snaps back into your mouth. It's similar in consistency to that. Um, it makes gummy things more elastic. So it makes liquid things more gummy. And then you add even more or heat it up even more and then it'll make gummy things elastic. Um, it's one of the ways that cross-linking can be formed is with heat, which is how we're going to make flubber. This is a image of uh, cross-linking molecules. So what is the point, right? Well, the point is flubber, let's be honest here. But when you mix the boron compound, the borax, uh, with the PVA, which we said was going to be an adhesive, and apply heat, the cross-linking happens. And so as we mix it and mix it and mix it, it's going to turn into something that resembles flubber. Um, this is just a representation of the cross-linking that occurs um, once you add your PVA to your borax, and then you'd heat it up and then you get the, you know, the cross-linking of the slime. So what are, what are our ingredients for flubber? It's going to be one and a half cups of cold water, two cups of Elmer's glue, one cup of hot water, two teaspoons of borax, and food coloring. You can use any color that you want. We used the green uh, as because the flubber in the movie is green. Uh, my daughter really wanted pink flubber, um, but I am a purist. And so I crushed her dreams of pink flubber. Um, I should also mention that if you don't have borax, borax on hand and you want to make this, you have no options but to buy like a giant box of it because um, they only sell it in one size. So I have this huge box of borax now and I only took two teaspoons out of it. Um, and one note I would buy the clear Elmer's glue. It makes it uh, more see-through. I could only find white Elmer's glue, so uh, it's not see-through like it was in the movie. Uh, you could see through the flubber in the movie. It was kind of like translucent and clear. Um, ours just kind of looked more like slime. And here are all of our ingredients and my giant box of borax. So the instructions. So first, we are going to mix cold water and food coloring and glue into a bowl. Then we're going to mix it, mix it, mix it. And it looked really cool right off the bat. It was, I don't know, food coloring is food coloring and glue and water are just like, I don't know, very cool to, it's cool. It looked cool. Um, we are then going to, going to dissolve the borax in hot water. You can you heat up the water in the microwave for about two minutes. I watched it and once it started to look like it was bubbling and about to boil, I stopped it just because I didn't think I needed boiling hot water. Um, and then mix the borax in. I don't think anything bad would happen if you did that in reverse and heated it up with the borax, but I was not going to test that theory. In my microwave, I don't think it would have exploded, but I did not want to take that chance. So then you add your hot borax solution into the cold water food coloring glue solution, and you mix it really good. So here we are mixing it. I would not stir it too fast as it will splatter um, while it's still, uh, while the cross-linking is still taking place. Uh, eventually though, 
as you're stirring, you will start feeling it, you know, becoming tighter and harder to stir. And then eventually you get this goopy, elastic, rubber, green slime. And this is our flubber. And we played for it, played with it for uh, several hours afterwards. And it is now, some of it is now sitting in a jar on my daughter's dresser because she thinks it's amazing. Um, it made a lot of flubber. <laughs> you probably could cut the recipe in half. I didn't know what to do with the leftovers, so I um, wrapped it in some plastic bags and put it in the trash can. And I'm hoping that I didn't, you know, kill off some sort of environment by doing that. Um, but I would not put it down your sink, that's for sure, because it's, um, it sticks to everything. And, oh, the food coloring is definitely going to stain your hands green. But we had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I recommend if you have kids that you do it with them. It's a very great science experiment. Um, really easy to do. It's easy for them to understand. I explained it to my daughter throughout the whole process and she totally got it. She's 10. Um, and there was like instant gratification. It took us, if we weren't taking pictures and like trying to, you know, make it into this presentation, it probably would have took us 10 minutes to make. So like a rainy day, this is a great thing to do with your kids.